And you and you said something that I really could relate to. Um, you said your mom, you know, she was how um how saddened she was, and you know, mm -hmm. we don't realize I think the the um the burden that they bear yeah. uh, having a child in jail, you know, even though it was nothing to do with them, they, they feel, you know, they think what they could have done better and this and that. Yeah. And my mom would say a lot of the similar, a lot of similar things, you know, she would say that she wouldn't even want to leave and, and uh go to go to the store or go take a right. vacation because she didn't want to miss one of my phone calls. That's stuff. right. And That's you right. Said, you said too, you said, uh, you told your mom, well, no, go ahead, you know, go ahead. Yeah. You know, at that point in time, you was acclimated. And yeah. it's a trip how, you know, um, it seemed like you had pretty much accepted that you had put yourself there and you didn't want to, you didn't want to, you know, cause your loved ones unnecessary stress. And sometimes right. I, I like how you said that because, you know, each, each, each person who's locked up handles things differently. You have, differently. I've, seen, I've seen some uh, do, people locked up who are extremely selfish and want mm. everything from their loved loved ones you know i was in salinas and i had a friend who used to want his wife to come visit and she lived about five or six hours she'd drive up to visit because we had weekend visits uh, mm -hmm. on friday saturday and sunday mm -hmm. she'd drive up friday to visit have to take her son to a football game on saturday and oh. he'd, want, he'd want her to come back again on sunday so he was extremely yeah. selfish in his expectations and of course she eventually she eventually uh ran off on him but <laughs> I was, but i was asking Initially, when you initially got uh, arrested, my question was meant to be, how did your family feel seeing you, you know, when you in the first stages of juvenile hall and stuff like that? You know, when they when they were just coming terms to or trying to come to terms with you being potentially um, facing a lot of time. It it tore them up as a family. Um, because, like I said, you know, my brothers were always the one to to get in trouble, you know, get arrested, go to juvenile hall. I like, and then my one brother was kicked out of the state of California, you know, so it was not expected of me. And so it, they had a lot of years later, they would tell me they, they lived with a lot of guilt, you mm -hmm. know, because they say it should have been them, not me, right. you know? Right. Um, <laughs> and so it, it really kind of ate them up, you know, as a whole. And I have, my my younger sister um at the time she she started having like mental mental problems um mm. because you know we were we were we were close you know what i mean and 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 she couldn't understand i think she realized the the severity of it before i realized the severity of it you know and so right. she really kind of just shut down and didn't you know, interact or she just was different, you know, she just was completely different, but it, it tore my, it tore my family up. But my mom, she, she, she kept on going, you know, she kept on trucking and I love that lady. I swear. I love that lady. Well, let me ask you how much older were you than your younger sister? Um, three years. Yeah. Okay. And, years. and I, and I asked that question specifically because for the uh, people out there that's watching that may be caught up in crime or the youngsters or whatever, and who have younger siblings, sometimes you or we don't realize how much our younger sisters or siblings look yeah. up to us. They look, they look, they look, you know, they look for us for guidance. Uh, they, em they uh, emulate us. They want to be yeah. like us. You know, we might play basketball with them, football. We might teach them how to jump rope or whatever. And yeah. all of a sudden, when we are suddenly removed from their lives, that's something extremely traumatizing and traumatic for them, you know. Right. And so that's that's something that we don't think about. You know, we don't think about how our absence could potentially affect, you know, people in our lives and stuff. And right. so, you know, um, that's just a lot of stuff that later on we have to also be guilty about, you know, um, feel guilty about just not being there for the people who who matter to us. The that's people right. who stayed there when we was incarcerated and stuff, you know, and right. and so uh so okay, so you're 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 finally, you know, uh, as we call it in California, you finally catch the chain, which means now you're <laughs> leaving from the uh, juvenile facility or from uh, the county jail, and you're heading to prison. So mm -hmm. what 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 was that experience like for you? You know, uh, riding riding to prison on the bus. If I tell you that <laughs> the the weather, I'll never forget. It was the skies were dark. Um, it was so gloomy, so cold. It was rainy. Um, it was just horrible, horrible weather. And so the ride up there, 
like I said, I didn't shed a tear. I didn't, none of that. It, it still didn't, you know, register to me, but so I was just kind of quiet, you know, the whole ride up there. Um, mind you, I'm just 18. I'm, I think I was three weeks in being 18, you know, um, cause I had to wait for the next bus to, to, that went to prison to, to get on it. So I was about, you know, I was 18 and, um, I was surrounded by all these older women and that were in and out, you know, that, that kept violating and it, that was their life, you know? Um, so I was just quiet, just kind of listening and they were joking and laughing and cause it was nothing for them, you right. know? Um, so we get there and I remember the weather was just stormy and, and, um, just ugly. And we get through, we go to R and R, we get processed in and, you know, do the whole strip naked. And that was my first, I was like, whoa, right. <laughs> that was like my first introduction. Um, cause in juvenile hall, they let me, you know, I got to shower by myself and, you know, do those things. So I didn't really have to be strip naked like that in front of other people. But that all went out the window the day that I got to Chowchilla because they don't care if you're 18 right. or if you're 88, they don't care, you know? Um, so let me let me just stop you right there and let me ask you. Um, so at the time when you get sentenced, it's 1998. What mm -hmm. what is your what is your lawyer telling you in terms of having to serve all that time? Is he telling you to be hopeful that you're getting out, or because at that time, for people who may not know, um, if you had life back then, even if you had life with parole, it was essentially a life without parole That's sentence right. because the board That's wasn't right. releasing it. The board wasn't releasing anybody. Who had yep. a life sentence for murder? So was yep. your was your was your lawyer uh, straight and forward with you, or did he say, "Hey, try to stay out of trouble. You might come home." What was your mindset? Um. So he, uh, she. I'm sorry. She told me she basically when I was sentenced uh, to to 15 to life, basically told me I was going to end up doing most of that and some. So, mm -hmm. but she did say. She didn't sugarcoat anything or, you know, anything like that. But she did say um, there's two ways you can go about it. You could either try to do right once you get inside, go to the self-help group, stay out of trouble, don't get any write-ups. Or you can get caught up and make, your, make it extremely hard for you um, to get granted parole. And I heard her when she was talking to me. Um, but it kind of went in one ear and out the other, because at that point, that's not where my mind was. My mind was just day by day, like just, you, you know what I mean? Just realizing where I was and trying to get through that day. So, you, you know, when you first get to prison, you have to go to a yard or receiving. Right. So I think I was on a yard for about three months um, and still I was just going through the motions. But. I realized when I got to, when I hit the main yard, I had a lot of older women, thankfully, take me in and, and give me the tools and tell me, you got to, you got to go here. We got to go here. You got to get involved in this, you know, cause they really helped me set me on my path right? to so, do the right thing. So I want to, I want to, I want to rewind just a tiny bit and go back to when you said, okay, now you're just now arriving and now the guards is basically telling you guys to strip out. It's, it's a whole bunch <laughs> of women. It's no, it's, it's no um, privacy. It, it's like, uh, it's dis disrespectful and degrading. So <laughs> explain that process to people out there. You guys have to get naked, you have to bend over, cough in front of a whole all bunch of it, of a right. whole bunch of people. And I, I remember, and I kind of laugh about it now, but I remember when I seen, um, two, two, uh, well, we call them stud broads or, you know, gay women, but they look like men. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I remember two of them walked past me. I thought, they got men in here? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's how young and naive I was, you know? And I thought, oh, my uh -huh. God, there's men in here. But when we all had to strip out, I realized, oh, no, that's a woman. That's a whole woman. But, right. but yeah, they make you strip out, bend over, cough. And I remember I didn't do it the right way. And, and I just felt like crying at that point because she kept making bend over, cough harder, cough deeper, you know, that type of stuff. And I thought, God, this is real. This is, this is not a joke. This is not a game, you know? Right. So, um, now when you, when you get to women's prison, is it, is it, 
is it anything like the men's prison in terms of is there a lot of like racial politics or the gangs are people separated by gangs or what what is the atmosphere there like so in the in the aspect of uh gangs there are gangs there but it is nothing like the stories we would hear from the men's prison mm -hmm. everyone is together there's no separation um you know um my i had my my wife you know she was black and uh everybody just dates everybody hangs out with everybody lives with everybody um so yeah none of that is separated there's uh there is there wouldn't be like any race wars or you know r riots or any of that so in that aspect it's completely different from from how the men do things right now you said so you said my wife so so I <laughs> you, you got into a uh same-sex relationship in there i did and their homosexuality or same-sex relationships it's not frowned on a little bit um it is but there's nothing they can do to stop it you right. know there's nothing the guards can do even if even if you put one person on D yard and the other one on B yard, they will still find a way to, to link up, you know, through a ducket or a self-help or, uh, <coughs> you know, uh, uh, what, what, right. anyway, they, they found any way possible to still link up. There's nothing they could do to stop any, any of that. But now, no, when I, when I was asking, it's not frowned upon, I, I, um, I was talking about by the, uh, oh, the people other that inmates. convicts. Yeah. Because you know, no. um, the, of course, in in the men's prison, it's um you have a lot of individuals who who haven't been to prison. They believe that everybody in in jail is is uh you know in in same sex <laughs> relationships. But in in the men's prison, it's extremely frowned upon. But of course, that doesn't stop people from participating. But you do right. have people who you know um who frown upon that. But so not so in the, in the women's prison is is different. It's like it's it's just normal program and the oh, women a normal program. No right. women, they, they yeah they don't care. The no, because everybody, whether whether my girl, my wife used to say that women come in there and they're gay for the stay, uh -huh. <laughs> even though they may not do that stuff, you know, on the street being free, they may not um, like the same sex on the streets, uh, but inside, it's <laughs> it's like the normal it's normalcy in there, you know. What what percentage of women would you say in in the women's prison um, are in same sex relationships? Oh my gosh, um, probably sixty to seventy percent. Most everyone is. Most right. everyone is. Even if you you don't think you're going to get involved with someone, you get involved with <laughs> somewhere down the line. So so how did how did you how did you feel about same sex relationships beforehand? Had, were you bisexual or had, um, had it I always, yeah, I always was attracted to women, not like, not like, like that, but I would see a pretty girl and I'd be like, oh, she's pretty. Or, right. you know, um, my aunt, you know, she's a lesbian, my sister's a lesbian. So it was in our family, you know, um, right. uh, different, you know, family members. And so it, it wasn't. I didn't think it was gross or anything like that, you know? And like I said, I, and even till now, I see a, a, someone who's cute and I think, man, she looks nice, but you know. So let me ask you this. Cause you, you, you know, you're relatively attractive and you Thank come you. in here, you're young. I'm so, so, I mean, were they, were the women on you? Were they clamoring on you? Was it like, you know, was it like, Oh, it's fresh meat or how did, <laughs> did, did, did any women try to, you know, um, come over there and be motherly and, and give you advice. How, how did that go? The, there was a lot, definitely a lot of um, motherly attention. Cause like I said, I was a baby, you know, they called me, that's what they called me a baby lifer, you know? Mm -hmm. And so thankfully I had, I had the right women um, in my corner, you know, and even, even if they themselves were caught up in the mix and doing things, they would tell me don't do what I do or you know stay away from this part of the yard don't come over here or, you know so definitely um I had a I had a lot of good women that that helped me uh stay focused and not you know right. take that route now in California there are a lot of females who participate in gangs were there any any in your opinion any hardcore uh 
gang members in there or yeah i i think there 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 were and i'm sure there is now probably it's probably more so now than it was back then you know because it's i think it's more predominant now mm-hmm. i'm assuming i don't know i haven't been there but um back then it was the ones that you kind of not so much feared but you knew you didn't want to move into their room or you didn't want to cross them. They were the ones that had been there for so long already and kind of had built their name. Um, So I don't know if it was so much that they were associated or uh, linked up with any gangs. It was just, you know, they had built their name, you know, a name for themselves. And so, but gangs are not back then gangs were not um, an issue. They, right. they were it was not an issue was there was there any beef between the uh the northern inmates and the southern inmates or that was that was a non-issue as well no there was um because back back then the there was more um serain, you know women from the south uh, right. that were there and there was a a roommate of mine she she was from my area, and so she was, you know, a Northeño, right? Mm-hmm. Or nor, nor, or Northe- Northeña, huh? Because she's a female. But there was like one or two of them only, and that was an issue. But and she fought each and every one of them one on one, and mm. they they you had to respect her, you know, because she stood by herself with the right. group of these women, and so she she got up with them one on one, and it was what it was, mm. it was what it was. But other than that, I can't remember any any other issues like that with gangs that wasn't a, a problem you know right and and so um in in the male prison of course you know inmates keep a lot of manufactured weapons a lot of knives and stuff like that did uh did the women did the women uh keep weapons and stuff or they did there was you you would always hear um you know when they would do room search and stuff they they might have found a shank or um you know something like that but um it wasn't like you, we would see story or hear stories of men having like these knives and like crazy, crazy weapons, but it wasn't like that inside. Um, ma- mainly I think the women used to do was take a, the razor blade and uh, melt it to the a toothbrush or something like that. But outside of that, I think that was the extent of it. It wasn't no crazy weapons or anything like that. It was just like a razor blade or a, a, um, a toothbrush that was shaved down to, you know, have a pointy edge, a pointy edge on it. But other than that, that was it. There was no like crazy manufacturer weapons. Right. Was there, was there, was there a lot of fights in there on a daily basis or did fights occur often? All the time, all the time. And that's the thing you it was you would you, a fight would break out more so over somebody disrespecting them or their woman you know owing them money for cigarettes or you know drugs you know that type of thing um or someone's hygiene not being being up to par because that's a big thing you know that's a big big thing right. um but but yeah so fights broke out all the time prob yeah all the time it was a normal normal mm-hmm. thing mm-hmm. And so, um, what was the, what was the most, what was the thing that, that shocked you the most when you fresh, you know, when you first got to prison, something that was just like, you know, kind of just shocked you that you, uh, wasn't quite prepared for. Um, honestly, I think it was the homosexuality. It was just everywhere. And, Mm -hmm. and at first, yeah, I, my aunt, you know, is 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 lesbian but she you don't really see that she didn't put that in your face or anything like that you know but right. inside it was they were getting it in whenever they felt that they could or you know they felt the CEO wasn't paying attention so I think that was the most shocking thing for me when I first um landed was was all the the, the homosexuality that took place the openness of it the openness of it is I'm telling you, women are bold. Uh-huh. <laughs> and and so, okay, I know um, every, every, you know, during the weekends in the, in the male prison, the visiting room were always packed. What was it? Mm. What, what was it like up there in, in the women's prison? Were they, were they getting a lot of support? Were people coming same. to visit? Uh-huh. Yeah, same. Uh, back when I first hit, 
uh, visiting was open. We had uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So it was four, you know, four days a week that, that the visiting room was open. And so Thursdays and Fridays, it was quiet, uh, but it's on the weekends is when it was packed. Every table was, was you know, occupied and even outside it, it was packed. Yeah. Now, in your opinion... The people who were visiting were they were they were they family members or was it yeah. a lot of men running up there to see their to the no. girl? Because no, the, not at all. In the male's prison, of course, it's a lot of women coming to visit men. Right. So right. in the in the women's prison, it's more family, brothers and sisters, mom and dad, and kids. Yeah, you know, like grandparents bring in their children, uh, right. bring in you know the, the kids or um, brothers and sisters, you know, things like that. Because I think. You can have up to five people. I can't remember. I think it's about five, five people to come in at one time. Um, and so it was mainly families. Yeah, you had a small, small percentage of um, husbands or boyfriends coming to see their, their women. But uh, when I mean small, I mean super small. Other than that, it was, it was families, you know. Like my mom, she would come and she would bring my little sisters and brother because she later got remarried and had, you know, um, I have another, I have two other sisters and a brother um, that came after um, mm -hmm. I got in trouble. So she, she would bring them and it was mainly families that visited. Right. So when I first, I first got to, uh, to prison in 1996 and of course, you know, um, female pictures and, and nude magazines and all that, that was a hot commodity. So what about in the, in the female prison where there, where there uh, pictures of guys in there? Are they no. So that's, that's not a concern. Huh? No, it's not a concern. Um, you, they have the same women hanging up the same women, uh, sexy women hanging up that the men did the, the mm. women hung those up, but it wasn't, I don't know. unless it was hidden, um, you didn't see a lot of men hanging up or, um, being, you know, talked about like that. It, right. Mm -mm. Right. Mm -hmm. And what about in uh, like the was there a lot of uh, male guards who worked in the prison and was there a lot of sexual tension between the male guards and the women or the women trying to flash the guards or how did that how did that work? The male COs are the worst, the worst. They are horrible. Hmm. I used to work. Um, I was the lieutenant's clerk. And uh -huh. so, you know, I worked up at the program office and. Um, I had one of the sergeants come up behind me and uh, rub his body against mine and, and sniff on my neck and stuff and tell me, you know, just stuff he shouldn't have been saying. And, and right. um, so the, 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 the male CEOs are super disrespectful, uh -huh. super, super, because they prey upon the fact that most women are there for years and years. And right. like anybody, you know, of course, you miss the opposite sex, you know, for most most people, you know. And so they knew that. Um, but yeah, so 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 the male COs are horrible, horrible. Mm -hmm. Were they were they were they allowed to uh to search you guys? Cause I gotta admit, you know, that was one of my favorite past pastimes <laughs> they search by a uh, by a female officer. I know one time I even went back, I tried to go back and get a second search. I tried uh -uh, to act like, try to act like I had left my coat in the kitchen. Yeah, she <laughs> said, Boy, get out of here. I just searched you. So uh it, are they trying to get a feel? Man, they, I ain't they were. <laughs> Any means necessary. Man, there was like like I say that was whoa. Your, your camera, <laughs> okay, then your camera. Yeah, out. sorry, I had a call. I I, I got oh, it. I okay, got rid okay. of it. Sorry about that. Um, they initially they were the 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 the, the male CEOs were allowed to um, search you, not strip search you, but you know pat you down. Right. But I think um, a couple years before before I ended up paroling, they couldn't do it anymore. It, oh. it, that 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 I think there was a lawsuit or something, if I could remember right. Uh huh. And so, so. I, when I I spoke to you, you had told me you had a friend or somebody who uh, <laughs> she was extremely flirtatious with a lot of the male guards, and it got. I think you said that she she had got pregnant or something or no, not pregnant, but she is she was she is known. She's still there. Uh hopefully she comes home soon. But she's been there for God, I don't know, probably going on 30 years at this point. 20, 20 more than 25 years, that's for sure. But um yeah, when she when I was there, she she was known for for messing with these um 
CEOs, but it wasn't just the male. She was messing with the women CEOs and, and she had them bringing her all kinds of stuff. You know, they, they were, they were bringing her in <coughs> tons of stuff because she was mm-hmm. known. I don't know what she did, but uh-huh. she, she, she was doing. <laughs> and, and that was going to be my next question. What about, what about contraband cell phones, uh, you know, uh, tobacco, weed and stuff. All was, that. Was, was it an influx of that in there? And yeah. when did, you know, um, do you remember like when cell phones started getting real, you know, just where a lot of people was having them or was a lot of people having them? Was it? No, was it, uh, back then cell phones weren't um, there, there. Some women did have them, you know, but it was maybe spread out. You know, I could imagine today it's probably a whole different story today. But back then, you know, cell phones weren't really running rampant through there. But there was some that did have them, but then they would get themselves caught you know, cause they were too loose with the information, sharing, sharing it with somebody that didn't have no business knowing that they had it, you know? And so right. then they would bring, um, the dogs in and, uh, what, what, what ISU in and, and, right. and search the whole yard. And, and just, I remember sometimes they would bring them in and have us all have an entire, uh, unit go to the yard and have to sit down on the yard. Well, they just tore the whole unit up, you know? with their dogs and stuff but yeah cell phones were there um tobacco was there because uh, they had stopped the sale of tobacco on, right. on canteen back then do you remember that right and so I think that was like around 2000 and because i was at ironwood getting ready to leave so like around 2003 2004 mm-hmm. i think was when yeah they, they had stopped the sale uh-huh. of it and um you, did you guys have the, the the lighter boxes outside the units so you could go yeah. up there and, and light your cigarette Right. And they started disconnecting all those. They started and I, taking them out. Yeah. I remember and around so, that time, lighters mm-hmm. was going for like $50, $100. It Ooh, was a CEO you know, who, who yep. I knew who'd bring me lighters, you know, and um, right. so, I could, so I could sell them and stuff. Yeah. And they had started, you know, people were, were buying, you know, because they had like maybe another month or two and then tobacco was going to be discontinued. Right. And you had people buying huge amounts, hiding it, burying it on the yard, putting it up in their lights and all types <laughs> yep. of stuff. They were trying, all type trying of to stuff. prepare for when it was going to actually stop being sold. So yeah, we, we experienced that too. We had, um, um, and I, and I'm still, I'm still, I still talk to him to this day, but he got walked off because he was, he was bringing in cans of tobacco. Cause back then a can, of, I think a can of tobacco was like $13 out here, mm-hmm. but they were being sold for a thousand dollars inside. Oh, and wow. so, yeah. So um, he was bringing them in left and right, but he was getting paid you know, right. for doing it, yeah. but he was bringing in um, cans of tobacco and uh, paper, you know, rolling papers rolling and, papers, right. and um, you know, other things as well, but right. yeah. So, oh, you know what? And sorry, so I got, I got to get into this. I'm pretty sure my um, my viewers want to know about this. What about the sex toys and stuff up in there? Were, were, <laughs> were those, were women selling those and making those? And Yeah, yeah. So we had um, one of the vocations there were um, uh Dennis, you know, uh, what was it called? Um, I forgot the, the proper term for it, but where they made teeth, you know, dentures. Uh-huh. And so there was one of them, uh, one of the girls that worked there. I remember she used to sell, she would make dildos out of that teeth material, oh, you know, wow. and sell them all over the, all over the yard. And everyone knew to go to her because she was making them. <laughs> right. we, it, it was a rumor in the um in the male prisons that the women's prisons they wouldn't they wouldn't they didn't feed you guys sausages because they would they would use them for <laughs> sex, sex toys and stuff like that no they- <laughs> <laughs> so that was just a rumor huh? that's a rumor i think yeah we got sausages they didn't need to cut it out yeah they did <laughs> Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah yeah they did you know women people are creative people right. in general are creative so um you know anything you could fathom you that you might want somebody's gonna make it happen inside you know right. some somebody right. so especially with all that time on on their hands right the um I've seen some extremely creative uh, uh, prisoners. You know, they can, like you say, mm-hmm. make a, make a whole lot of things that that right. uh, you know that really impress me and stuff. So, yeah, I was just wondering about that. And um, <laughs> so, let me see. Uh, so, did you get into, did you get into much trouble when you was in there? Uh, um, in any fights too, and all that type of stuff? Or y- yeah, you you know, I think uh, a few years in. Um, I, when did I meet my first girlfriend? 
um, probably about my third or fourth year in, um, I had my first girlfriend. And so, you know, when we lived together and so there was another couple in the room as well. And that was tension because you can't really have two couples in a room at the same time. And so, and so for, lived four to a room, eight to a room, we had eight women to a room. So, so, you, so you wasn't in, you wasn't in the cell. Then, so it just wasn't like you and another individual in the cell. It was, it was kind of like a, um, a cubicle. Yeah. Yeah. So we had our own shower. We had our own, um, bathroom. We had our own shower. We had two sinks in there. Um, and then we had eight lockers, four bunk beds. Mm, okay. So, um, um, me and my girlfriend lived together and there was a, another couple in the room. And then we had obviously other roommates, but that brings tension because normally uh, when there's a couple in the room, they kind of run the room. You know what I mean? Like it's their room, you know? Right, and right. so when you have two couples living in there, it's um, it was just a lot of tension, you know? And so my girlfriend was, was the aggressive, you know, the stud broad. And so her and the other aggressive bumped heads. Well, they fought and then, I remember the girl, the girlfriend, the, the aggressive girlfriend tried to jump in. I was like, you are not about to jump my girlfriend. So that's what happened. Right. <laughs> but it was so petty. So petty. So did you guys get in trouble and have to go to the hole? Uh -huh. or how did that work when, when uh, the women are in there fighting? So um, we didn't get caught. But when you do get caught, uh, you, you, you go up to the um, to the program office and they have these cages. Did you guys have those cages right, too? Right, most definitely, most definitely. Yeah, so you had the cages and then, uh, you know, you'd have to sit in the cages while they write up the report. And um, if it was serious, then you'd get, you know, you'd go to the whole, uh, what was it called? ADSEG, ADSEG, right. you'd, you'd go to ADSEG. Um, but if it was minor and it wasn't no big deal, then they would release you. Sometimes you might get a bed move and have to move off the yard or out the unit, but, um, but if it were serious, yeah, then they would take you and put you in ad said. 